Up till now, we have looked at the arithmetic sequence, and that was typically something like this. But now we need to move on to something new. What if we wanted to work out the sum of all of the numbers? So let me show you an example. So let's make a little column over here. So term 1 has a value of 9, and the sum is 9. Okay, that's not going to make sense just yet, but it will now. Term 2 has a value of 11, but the sum is 20. Why? Because 9 plus 11 is 20. Term 3 is 13, but the sum would be 33, because if you add the first three terms together, you get 33. Term 4, that's just 15, but the sum of the first four is 48. And then the term 5 is 17, but the sum of 65 terms would be, sorry, the sum of five terms is 65. So you see what sum does? It adds it up. And so when you are given a sequence, or we call it a series in mathematics, then it would look more like this. And so that over there, when we have pluses in between, that's called a series. And that's why the chapter that we're busy with is called series and sequences. So sequences are the normal things that are separated by commas or semicolons, whereas series have pluses in between them. So now, because it's an arithmetic series, surely there's a nice formula that would calculate the sum for us. Yes, there is, and it goes like this. So it's pretty basic. Sn stands for the sum of, whereas Tn used to stand for the term value. N is still the position or your number of terms. A is always going to be term number one, and D is the difference. Your teacher might show you this formula instead, which is nice to use if you know what the last term is. So L is your last term. If you don't know what your last term is, then you just use this formula over here. 99% of the time you're going to use the one that I showed you first. Uh, I barely ever see the A plus L formula being used. So yeah, if you have the last term, you can use that one. But check this out. Let's say you forget that you can use that formula and, well no, let's use that formula. But how would you normally find the last term? Now you have to think back to this formula over here that we looked at with the normal arithmetic sequences. And if we know that there's like 40 terms, then you could easily find the last term because you would know what A is, you would know that N is 40, that's the number of terms, and then you'd plug in your common difference. So then I could actually, so instead of calculating L, I could calculate it using our old formula. And look what happened. This A plus this A just becomes 2A plus N minus 1 times D. Spot any similarities? Aha. So they're actually just the same formula so if you if you have the last term you can use you can just type it in as l or you can just always fall back on that formula over there so there we have it a new thing that we might be asked to do is to calculate the sum of all of the numbers so this formula would do it for us and let's quickly give it a little test run so let's use this formula and let's calculate the sum of the first four terms well Let's just see what the answer should be. So it's 9 plus 11, which is 20, plus 13, which is 33, plus 15, which is 48. So that's what we expect the answer to be. So let's go find the sum of the first four terms. Well, how many terms are we looking at? Four. A is just going to be 9. Number of terms is 4, so we say 4 minus 1, times the difference between each number. Well, 9 to 11, that's 3. And so our common difference is going to be 3. Go ahead, type all of that in on the calculator, or we can simplify a little bit first, but you can just type it in the calculator. Oh, that's very embarrassing. I said the common difference was 3. <laughs> the common difference is 2. And so that's going to be a 6 over there. And so that's going to be 2 times 24, and that gives us 48. Okay, so the formula helps you to work out the sum without having to go plus everything yourself.